Um, sorry it's been a little while since my last vlog. I seem to always be saying that. Um, it got really, really hectic at the end of last year and I just didn't get time for vlogging, so I'm really sorry. Uh, but I hope that you all had a really rested and relaxed Christmas and New Year break. Um, I um, did nothing, basically. I had a lovely time with um, family over Christmas, but other than the sort of four or five days that we were seeing family, I was pretty much in my pyjamas for the whole time and it was glorious. Um, I think I really, really needed a break and I was a bit worried that I was going to end up doing a lot of work over the, um, the time off, but I didn't. I was so tired, I just um, stayed in my pyjamas, we went out for a few walks, we watched a lot of TV, even read some books and it was lovely. So um, sorry that I've been away, but it was um, much needed and I feel so much better now. Um, I do, I feel so refreshed, which is brilliant. Um, and I hope that you all um, had the opportunity to do the same. I um, thought that going forward, so I'm going to get back to the weekly vlogs, but I um, want to switch up the format a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I'm finding the whole um, monthly fabric haul, monthly makes video format, which is really good and I enjoy watching them, um, but I find it a little bit boring filming them, if I'm perfectly honest. I feel like I've got into a bit of a um, routine with them, even though I haven't vlogged for a while. And I just feel like, um, one, it's quite a lot of pressure because I often don't get time to do as much sewing as I would like. And then what happens is I end up at the end of the month, um, after I've done my fabric haul, with so many things to sew. And then that makes me feel quite stressed. So I thought kind of splitting it out through the month would be a little bit easier. Um, I also thought that um, it just mixes it up a little bit so if each week I'm showing you something that I've made and something that I'm planning to make and maybe things that I'm reading or things that I'm watching or um, other sewing related things it would just make it a little bit more interesting for you guys. Um, Obviously, I'm really open to hearing what you guys think because you're the ones that are watching this and you're the ones that I want to want to watch it. So let me know in the comments below. But I just think for the next sort of um, month or two, I'm going to mix it up a little bit, see what you think. And then um, if you would prefer and go back to the original sort of monthly fabric haul, fabric mix um, style of video. The other reason is because I do find I'll do a fabric haul at the beginning of the month and then by the time I come to show you my makes at the end of the month all the fabric has sold out and I know that's really frustrating for you guys and um, I think if I show it on a more weekly kind of basis that might be a bit easier. Um, so we'll see how we go. Um, first of all I thought I'd show you what I'm wearing. I should say as well I'm filming um, in the shop and it's a morning and the shop is open <laughs> so um, if this video is more heavily edited than normal it might be because I'm having to duck in and out um, but it's uh, Monday morning and it does tend to be quite quiet on a Monday morning um, in the shop so fingers crossed I can um, get this all recorded uh, ready to go out on Wednesday so yeah, I um, will show you what I'm wearing today. I've got a couple of things I've made over the last few months that I will show you. Um, today I think I'm just going to show you two dresses. So I am wearing a Linden sweatshirt dress. Oh, excuse the squeaky chair. Um, so this is a sweater dress. I don't know if I can show you my sparkly boots. Super sparkly boots that my husband bought me for Christmas. Um, but this is just a really cosy... Um, comfy sweater dress and it is made from our Charlotta embossed ponte that we had in in the navy and I'm really sorry we don't have any more of it in because it was um, it was in quite a while ago and it's just um, it's so lovely to wear I wear it all the time um, all I did I took the linden sweatshirt that's where I've got a really squeaky chair now. Um, I took the Linden sweatshirt pattern, which is quite straight up and down, um, as you'll know if you've made it. I worked out how much length I needed to add on. Um, I think it was about 12, 12 inches, something like that. Um, so I, I worked that down onto another uh, piece of pattern paper. 
12 inches down. I took my hip measurement, um, which is obviously the biggest part of me, and marked that onto the piece of paper. And I took my waist measurement and also marked that roughly where my waist is. So I had the normal pattern piece, the straight line, waist measurement, hip measurement. And then what I had to do was just um, freehand uh, the curves in, basically. Um, cut my pattern out sewed it all up on the open so I'm just going to get a bit closer to the camera because I've realised there's loads of space above my head. Ta -da! I'm having a really fluffy hair month this month. I think it's all the drizzle outside. It's so drizzly and horrible. Um, but yeah, so I had my, <laughs> my straight uh, pattern piece. I added in the waist measurement, the hip measurement, and then I um, freehanded a curve, cut it out, sewed it all up exactly as you sew the linden up normally, did it on the overlocker, so it was really, really quick. And then I tried it on and I had to take out a little bit more at the waist and I did end up taking out a bit at the hip as well because I had um, made the hip curve really quite pronounced so I ended up with a bit of a saddlebag effect but it's really really easy to do um let me know if you want me to go into more detail about how I did it um but it's so simple if you've got the linden pattern you could do it really easily um I'll link the pattern down below as well it was one of the ones I made for the one week one pattern and I wore a linden or a deri derivative derivative of the <laughs> of the linden pattern every day and this is the dress version and you could make this out of any ponty um i think it's really nice to wear because it's super cozy feels like pajamas but especially in this fabric because this fabric is so lovely it doesn't feel um like too casual it feels quite nice um quite smart um, but yeah, you can obviously tailor it to your personal taste. So if you did want to keep the straight waist in and just have it as a really, really loose style, you could do that. I mean, this, I haven't overfitted it. I have just sort of taken it in a tiny bit so it wasn't too baggy. Um, and you could, um, you could make it even longer. You could make it shorter and have it as like a tunic length. Um, totally up to you. But the pattern's really versatile. If you're not comfortable with kind of drafting your own um, hip and waist curve and adding the length on yet. There is a really popular pattern out at the moment called the Nina Lee um, South Bank Sweater um, by Nina Lee Patterns, um, which I will link down below. And that's a similar style in that it's got the raglan sleeve, um, but it has got a high neck on it. So um, I'll link that down below because if you like the whole sort of sweater dress style but you're not keen on drafting it yourself um, and then that might be a good one. So I wanted to show you something else that I am wearing which is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here, my new pendant. So let me just, oh, get it to stop swinging around. There you go. So as you can probably see this is a very shiny sim symbol, Sil <laughs> silver thimble. Um, now, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen the story about this, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit more. So my nan, who I um, was incredibly close to, um, she's a very, very special person, um, and she passed away a couple of years ago this month, actually, and she was a seamstress all of her life. She taught me to sew. She was a big, big, big part of my life. Um, and she collected thimbles. And from a, the age of you know, being a child up till when she died a couple of years ago, whenever I went on holiday, whenever I went somewhere special, I would buy her a thimble. Um, and since she passed away, I um, inherited her thimble collection. And I still buy myself a thimble when I go somewhere special, just because it helps me sort of um, remember her and think about her. But um, one of the thimbles that was in her collection um, was a really, really old tarnished silver thimble. I'll pop a picture in here so you can see how old and tarnished it really was. Um, and I don't even really know where the idea came from. I was just thinking that I wanted some sort of... Um, you know, sentimental piece of jewellery to remember Nan, but I do have her, I wear her um, wedding ring, um, which she gave me, but I, um, 
I wanted something about the whole sewing thing because obviously that's um, something that makes me feel really close to her is our link to sewing. And anyway, when I was looking at the collection of thimbles that I've got, I noticed that there was this silver one, which was, um, as I say, really, really mucky and tarnished and old. Um, and it was one I know was her mother's, so it must be at least 50, 60 years old. And I um, had a little thought. And where Satisfaction HQ is based, um, we're actually at a place called Home Grange Craft Village, which, oh, I'm doing that, <laughs> must stop with the hands. I'm very handsy when I talk. I'm really sorry if it's distracting. I'll try and like sit on my hands. Um, actually, that I'm, I'm not gonna try and sit on my hands because that will never work. Um, but yeah, Home Grange Craft Village, and there are 21 other um, businesses here and they're all sort of um, independent businesses we've got um, some shops we've got a lovely um, dressmaking alterations place which is actually the other side of the wall so sometimes you can hear them clattering away on their industrial sewing machines which is amazing um, we've got things like glass fusing pottery painting um, all sorts of things there's a lego club for um, the younger kids and there's also things like a beauty salon and a hair salon and it's great um it's really lovely to be part of um such a nice sort of it's not like a retail park at all it's a really independent um special place i suppose um but one of the newer businesses who moved in just after we did is uh, a jeweler's and he isn't a jeweler in the sense that he sells jewellery, he designs and makes bespoke pieces. Um, so he's a really, really talented craftsman. Um, his name's Tom, and his business is Thomas Williams Jewellery. Thomas William Jewellery. I'll link it down below. Um, and I popped in with my nan's very tarnished thimble one day and asked him if he thought he could clean it up and turn it into something that I could wear as a pendant. And he thought it was a brilliant idea and um, first of all checked it, put it in his little um, uh, water metal dish thing. I have no idea what the technical term is. It fizzed a bit. He told me it was definitely silver so that we could definitely do it, which was great. Um, and he cleaned it all up from the messy, messy one that you've just seen the photos of. And he used a special tool. So this hasn't been replated at all if I can show you again this hasn't been replated he has literally cleaned it up by putting it in the special water fizzy tray and then he's used a little tool that has gone into all of the um, little holes I'm not sure if that's going to focus in but you can see it's very very shiny and you can see there or I hope you can see there the hallmark on there um, when I actually picked it up I said oh it's a new thimble you've switched it um because it was so shiny but no he'd just done a really really amazing job of cleaning it up um, and we chose a really nice um long solid silver chain um and he's attached it really really securely for me so i can wear it and i wear it all the time and i really really love it it's so special to me um it makes me feel really connected to my nan and like if i put my finger into it i think oh this is what she would have done when she was sewing because um, I don't really hand sew very often so I don't use a thimble um, but it's just nice to do that from time to time and I actually think it looks quite cool and quite unusual and I get lots of comments on it um, and obviously it ties in really nicely with the fact that I own Satisfaction. Um, so yeah I just thought I would share that with you guys in case any of you had um, any thimbles um, lying around that means something to you and you um, wanted to get a jeweler to do something with them because I think that's a really really nice um, uh, sort of present idea be it for yourself or for someone that you um, care about obviously it would have to be solid silver because um, I don't think the others um, like the sort of nickel base ones would would um, come out so well but yeah, I just thought I would share that. I'll pop his, um, I'll pop Tom's details down below. Um, but if you're really far away, I'm quite sure that you could take a special thimble into another jeweler's and um, get them to do a similar sort of thing for you. Um, but yeah, I really like that. So I thought I would share it. 
The other thing I wanted to share with you this week is something a bit different. It is a book that I've been reading. So over um, Christmas and New Year, I um, managed to read, which was amazing because I hardly ever get any time to read. And I read this book, which I asked for for Christmas and my husband bought it for me. It's called The Red Ribbon by Lucy Adlington. I put it on my Christmas list because I heard the author talking on a radio show and she is a, um, Lucy Edlington is a costume historian um, so she knows lots about um, sort of um, clothes and costumes throughout the ages and this book, oh it made me laugh, it made me cry, it's got loads of um, like little sewing pictures in the background um, it is, I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to obviously give away any spoilers, but it is about a 14 year old girl called Ella who is in a concentration camp in the Second World War. She is a seamstress. It's about how her love of sewing um, and her sewing ability is a big part of her war. Um, it's actually aimed at, um, it's classed as young, so I just had to um, stop for a second because a customer came in, so if the shots change that's why. I do think people must think I'm a little bit of a lunatic. Um, I do get a lot of customers in that do watch my vlogs um, and I absolutely love it, but then there are also a lot of customers that have absolutely no idea why I'm sitting in a room talking to myself with a camera, <laughs> so <laughs> I just have to get over this like cringe-worthy feeling that I get. Um, anyway. I was saying so it is aimed at um it's not aimed at but it's a young adult book um obviously sadly i don't think i can class myself as a young adult anymore um but i found it really really good i don't think it is childish at all um it doesn't go into any of the horrors that we know happened in the holocaust it does touch upon things so you kind of know things are going on in the background and if you're not a young adult and you're old enough to know um what that means and obviously you get the the general gist of it and a lot of us will know quite a lot about how um, horrible that was, but it doesn't focus on those gory details. There are a lot of themes in the book that I find really interesting, um, but one of them is um, that often when we talk about fashion or clothes, it's seen as quite frivolous. Um, and the book touches upon how actually your clothes are such an important part of who you are. So for example, in the, um, concentration camps all their clothes were taken away from them because it was all part of stripping them of their identity um, and I just found it really really interesting and there's um, obviously talk about sewing in it and um, just how they would have um, done things um, back then and especially under those circumstances it's just a really really good book so I thought I would share that with you so that's the red ribbon and again I'll link it down below um, I think it would be a really good read um, for everyone. It made me laugh and it made me cry um, and I really, really loved it. One of the best books I've read for ages. So um, I'll link it down there as I said. Um, right, I am going to go and show you the other thing that I um, have made recently, or one of the other things I have made recently. So just bear with me, I'll be Bye. back. Um, so this is the Avid Seamstress Day Dress. I will pop a picture up here of the pattern. I have made it before and shown you on a vlog. I made it for um, our launch party out of a double gauze. So um, if you want to see that one, I'll link back to the video that that was featured on. And I made the um, standard gathered skirt that comes with the pattern. This one is made from our Rio crepe and it's in um, our cherry red, which I think shows up quite well there. When I step backwards, I think it goes a little bit orangier than it actually is, but it's definitely red. Um, I've done three quarter length sleeves. I've lengthened the sleeves and I will show you I've also added pleats instead of gathers um, this time because I thought it would be more flattering. Um, so I'll just step back and show you. So you can see I've done two deep inverted uh, pleats there and the same at the back. Um, and I really prefer that shape to the gathered skirt. Um, for me, I think it's more flattering. The thing that I struggle with, 
you might be able to give me some advice on this guys I didn't have the pockets either because um, I just didn't one as always I was in a hurry whilst I was sewing and two I didn't want to sort of add any um, extra bulk at the hip because I really don't need it um, when I wear a belt so I've got the belt on here um, it's not too tight there's loads of room there I like wearing a belt because I like kind of defining my waist but I find that it always bunches up the dress it doesn't it doesn't matter whether it's this dress or other dresses can you see it just kind of upsets the style lines um, if I don't have the belt on it just hangs a little better I don't know what do you think what do you guys do um, but yeah there are the pleats as you can see um, I didn't make any other adjustments other than a um, standard two inch full bust adjustment which full bust adjustment which i always do on this pattern um and lengthening the sleeves down so that i could wear it in this cold cold weather this fabric is gorgeous it hangs really nicely i'll try and do a close-up for you it hangs really nicely it's got a lovely texture and weight so it feels quite expensive um but it's not um it doesn't need lining and it's yeah it's really lovely we've got a little bit of the red left um we had it in loads of colors but i think most of them have gone we've got a little bit of the red left we've got it in a gorgeous mustard we've got it in a burgundy um but we will be getting it back in some of the other colors but this is our rio crepe so i will link that down below in terms of the pleating of the skirt it's so easy to do um literally all i did was work out the difference in the size of the skirt panel to the finished waist measurement once the darts were put into the waist um, and then divided that by two on the front so I knew how um, deep each pleat needed to be and I did the same on the back and then just attached the skirt as normal and um, I'm still holding my belt <laughs> uh, probably shouldn't do that um, I think Lisa the other seamstress has actually done a tutorial on how to do it on her website in much more detail than I could give you here unless this video goes on forever so I will um, link to that down below as well but I really really love the pleats um, I do really love the gathers too and I'm just going to pop in a photo of Samantha from Sew by the Seaside who's one of our Sewers Faction bloggers she made the other seamstress day dress for her December blogger make um, she made it in our blue luxury crepe I'll pop the photo in up here so you can see how utterly gorgeous she looks um our luxury crepe is just a little bit lighter than our rio crepe um so again it's still perfect for dresses um and i think the day dress is so versatile there are so many things that you could do with it i think next time i make it for me the one thing that i will change is i will just probably lower the neckline a little bit because i feel like Although the fit on the bust is good because of the um, full bust adjustment, I feel like it's perhaps a little bit frumpy on me because I've got a big chest. Um, I don't like the neckline isn't ridiculously high or anything, but it's just not as flattering. So I might just scoop it out a little bit if I make it again. But I think this dress has a really good potential to be one of those um, where if you just tweak the fit quite a bit, you could end up with like the perfect body block almost to use for lots of other patterns. So yeah, there is my um, Somus dress. I wore it, made it and wore it for our Somus event here um, just before Christmas, which was fab. So um, I hope that you like that one, guys. I hope you've liked the different style of video. Um, I'm going to quickly show you what I am going to be making this week. Um, I've started storing my work in progress in these, like... I don't even know what you call them, plastic folders. They're like children's book bags. So I find it really um, helpful to have everything all in one place um, once I've started cutting things out. But I am going to be making a Tilly and the Buttons Rosa dress. Um, I've actually already started this. I started this months ago. So I'm going to put it on here this week so that I actually finish it. Um, and I'm making it out of, you can see how far I've, I've got with it already. I'm making it out of our um, indigo soft washed denim so it's really screwed up <laughs> because it's been in that bag for weeks months even um, and I'm doing um, grey top stitching on it um, but it's a really soft really nice simple dress in fact I've already done 
I didn't even realise how much of this I'd done. I thought I'd just cut it out. Um, so there really is no excuse for it still being in that bag. Um, I've done the back yoke as well, the back top stitching. So I'm going to get that finished and show it to you next week. Um, let me know what you're working on. I would love to hear what projects you're working on at the moment. What are you sewing up? What work in progresses do you have that have been stashed in a bag for months? Make me feel a little bit, little bit better about my procrastination. That was a hard sentence. Um, and I hope that you all have a really, really fabulous week. And I will be back next week. Take care, guys. If you've liked this, um, please do give me a thumbs up. And, of course, like and subscribe um, for more of my videos. I'm going to aim to make sure that these go out every Wednesday as they were before Christmas. So, take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>